Hi, in this video from The Handy Anatomist, we are going to use a craft made up of fabric scraps from making masks to be able to represent the formation and structures of the inguinal canal. So what you see here are some spare fabrics. Um, you can see that uh, I've got them layered uh, in such a way uh, to represent the different layers of the anterior abdominal wall. If we were looking at a patient, this would be the left side of the body. This uh, fabric here represents the rectus abdominis. This is the external abdominal oblique. And if I peel this away, uh, this blue hatch fabric represents the uh, internal abdominal oblique. And if I peel this away, the yellow um, patch of fabric represents the uh, transverse abdominus. So one of the things to notice from looking at the anterior abdominal wall is that uh, this edge here represents the linea alba. This edge here represents the semilunar line. And what I've constructed here is I've used a um, toilet paper tube right here to represent the canal. You can, you can see the canal from the inside here. Um, what's important about the canal is that it's actually not a cylindrical tube, it's actually flat like this. And the anterior wall of the canal is uh, comprised of muscle fibers from the external abdominal oblique. Those muscle fibers from the external abdominal oblique come to around to the bottom of the, what would be the canal and wrap in on itself to form the inguinal ligament. And so that's represented by this edge right here. And I've actually got a pipe cleaner in there to represent the ligament. But the ligament itself is actually the external abdominal oblique fibers that fold in under here and form a nice, um, a nice solid structure. Uh, if I peel back the layers again, some of the things that you'll see represented here, these uh, white elastic fibers are gonna represent some nerves that we're gonna talk about just to um, cut to the chase a little bit. This nerve here is going to be the uh, ilioinguinal nerve from the L1 spinal level, and this is the iliohypogastric nerve. Um, it probably makes sense to, to show you that the canal itself formed by Again, the external abdominal oblique on the anterior side is formed by the internal abdominal oblique on the posterior side. And it's probably best to flip the model now that we're looking from the um, inside of what would be presumptively the, um, the abdominal cavity. You can see the transversus abdominis located here um, and the internal abdominal oblique and the external abdominal oblique. And you'll notice that here the, the back side of the canal is formed by the internal abdominal oblique muscle and, uh, and transverse abdominus and of course external abdominal oblique would go through the deep ring bounded here uh, on the canal. The, um, the black pipe cleaner represents the inferior epigastric artery and vein as it's coursing from the, uh, uh, from the external iliacs and up along the uh, anterior abdominal wall. When it's covered by peritoneum, uh, we call this the lateral umbilical ligament. The medial and the median umbilical ligaments are not represented in this model. So anyway, here is the inguinal ligament. Here is the deep inguinal ring. Here is the, would be the backside of the semilunar line. The arcuate line, which is not represented in the model, would be somewhere up here. Uh, the superficial inguinal ring, we'll come back to the front of the model, is represented here. And notice that the superficial inguinal ring is formed by a split in the external abdominal oblique muscle layers right here. So let's, uh, let's put in some structures in this model. It's best to do that from the backside. Uh, the structures that go into the inguinal um, canal via the, uh, the deep inguinal ring include the uh, testicular vein, and I'm representing that here with a, with a thick uh, elastic band. 
the testicular vein, which when uh, in the spermatic cord, as it gets to the testes, on its way to the testes, it forms the pampiniform plexus of veins. The testicular artery, represented here by this pipe cleaner, and the uh, genito, or sorry, excuse me, the um, the vas deferens, represented by this corded elastic, and then the genitofemoral nerve, which is represented by this flat elastic. So these structures are going into the canal. Notice that they're going into the canal lateral to the inferior epigastric artery, right through here. And it's by virtue of these that it we have a th this deep inguinal ring as these structures pass through it. Normally, this is closed uh, after um, uh, after uh, full development and descent of the testes. But if it remains open, then this becomes a potential place, if my fingers represent the bowel, for uh, what would be called an indirect or congenital hernia. Um, so the structure is going into the uh, into the canal. The vas deferens is going to originate from the uh, the true pelvis down here. The genitofemoral nerve, the genital branch specifically, is what's going through this canal, and it originates from the psoas, the surface of the psoas major muscle. And then the testicular artery and vein are coming from the internal iliac this way. I just can't hold that up in this model. So I'm going to push these through a little bit so we can see them emanating from the front of the model. So we'll tear that around. And here you can see our structures as they come through. And as they come through here, they're going to form and be encased by the uh, the fascias that were pulled by the testes from the anterior abdominal wall. And so um, those fascias represented by my hand here would surround these structures to form the spermatic cord. And of course, those fascias from superficial to deep are the external spermatic fascia, the um, um, cremasteric fascia or muscle, and the uh, internal spermatic fascia which are derived from the external abdominal oblique muscle, the internal abdominal oblique muscle, and the transverse, uh, or the transversalis fascia, um, because the transverse abdominus muscle ends as it goes towards the semilunar line. Okay, so let's flip the model over again, and let's take a look at what is going on medial to the lateral umbilical ligament or the inferior epigastric vessels. Notice that we have a triangle right here formed by the inguinal ligament inferiorly, the, uh, the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle medially, and the um, lateral umbilical ligament or the inferior epigastric vessel laterally. This triangle is called Hesselbach's triangle. So whereas an indirect or congenital hernia would enter into the canal through the deep inguinal ring, a direct or acquired hernia would push through the anterior abdominal wall in Hesselbach's triangle. So the last concept that I want to cover um, are the um, iliohapogastric and ilioinguinal nerves. So I'm going to flip the model back around. And in order to see those, um, one of the things about the structures that are going through the superficial inguinal ring here is the ilioinguinal nerve. And I've pulled it, I've tucked it in here. We're going to take a look at this. Here we go. Let's pull that through. So I've only tucked it here for convenience of the model. But the thing to notice here is that the ilioinguinal nerve comes out of the inguinal canal at the superficial ring, but it is not contained within the spermatic cord. And that's because it never actually entered the canal through the deep inguinal ring. You'll notice that that, that didn't exist on the back side. So where does it come from? It comes from here. 
the uh, ilioinguinal nerve, like all of the, uh, uh, like the nerves of the um, lumbar plexus that came through here, uh, which are not shown in the model, uh, at this point, once we're past the mid-axillary line, is traveling, it pierces through the transversus, uh, excuse me, the internal abdominal oblique muscle and travels between the external abdominal oblique and the internal abdominal oblique. And it sneaks, notice that, into uh, the canal region. Again, the canal is bounded by the external abdominal oblique muscle in the front and the internal abdominal oblique muscle in the back. You can imagine that this paper tube is part of this muscle here. Um, and it comes down through here and sneaks into that region without actually going through the deep ring, which would have been uh, this impression right here. So that's the uh, ilioinguinal nerve. Now the iliohypogastric nerve is also a branch of L1, and it doesn't go through the canal at all. It comes through here and, and um, will emerge from between the external abdominal oblique and the internal abdominal oblique. And notice that it is bypassing the canal altogether. And it will innervate the, the uh, hypergastric region uh, just above the, um, the pubic tubercle and crest. This nerve is important because it happens to lie in a region very close to uh, where a fan and steel incision would be uh, performed. And um, uh, minimizing damage to the nerve is, of course, desired, uh, certainly in terms of laceration, but most importantly, in terms of suturing the wound, uh, you don't want to suture this nerve. If you do, it causes an incredible amount of pain. So um, anyway, I think that's a good summary of um, the inguinal canal and the structures that go through it and how the canal is formed by the uh, anterior abdominal and ball muscles, which are represented by this model. All right, until next time, take care.